Tell the people, remember, you got to like and subscribe to Serious and Silliness on YouTube. Yeah. Hey, guys, don't forget, like and subscribe, Serious and Silliness on YouTube. Go follow the, uh, the so all social media platforms. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And um, I'll catch you guys later. Julius Maddox, the bench press king uh, of, of the planet, basically, um, is here with me and on Serious and Silliness. How you doing, Julius? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, 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 man. I appreciate you coming on. It should be pretty fun. Um, the first time I noticed you, I think the first time that you made a big splash, and correct me if I'm wrong, was a few years back, you... Uh, you did a C.T. Fletcher event. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Iron Wars. That's right. That's right. Iron Wars. And were you the guy in the uh, overalls? Mm -hmm. Me and my bro T.D. That's right. That's right. And that was the first time I noticed you. I think that was the first time the world noticed you, but I might be, I might be wrong. But, again. Maybe so. Maybe so. Um, so, for those of you who have been living under a rock, uh, Julius Maddox has the raw bench press uh, world record that he's broken several times over and is now on the road to 800. Absolutely, absolutely. How many times have you uh, broken your own record? We'll see, 739 was the first time I broke it. Then I came back uh, a month and a half later, broke 744. Uh, then 7, 770, hold on, 770. And then uh, eight, I mean, not eight, but a 782. There we go. 782. That was the one I was missing. I had, that was it. I had everything down except that one. You got a couple of other um, world records, though. You're like, you're the only guy ever to bench press 710 bench press meets or more, right? Yeah. Yep. I have, many, uh, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. How many uh, bench press meets have you uh, bench 700 in? That's the craziest thing. I can't even count because <laughs> I, I, it's been so long since I, I haven't bench pressed 700 pounds. It's like, it's a, so since, since uh, basically since I've been competing. So I have, uh, since competing uh, after I broke the world record, but uh, not the world record, but the 700 pound bench press, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared for this, uh, for these questions. But uh, okay. so I broke, uh, the first 700 pound for me, my said the 700 pound barrier in 2018, early 2018. And ever since then, I've, I don't think I've ever missed a 700 pound lift at a meet. Wow. So it's way more than 10 then. Uh, I believe so. I believe yeah. at least a bit between, I, I, I'll give it to you between 10 and 15. How about that? Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> and you're also the only guy that bench pressed 700 for uh, three reps. Is that accurate? Yes. And you I think the, the most I've done is 705 for four reps. Wow. I did not know yeah. that. I did not know that. And, um, I uh, interviewed Bob Merck, and uh, he's the only guy to – he's a quip lifter. He's the only guy to bench over uh, 1,000 and squat over 1,000. He said he met you, and he's a big dude. He's like 6'2", maybe 280. And yeah. he's, he said – I never had the privilege of meeting him. Hopefully one day I will. But he said you made him look like a baby. So <laughs> – <laughs> How big are you? Um, well, I'm currently I'm 448 pounds. Mamma mia. Okay. Weighed myself this morning, but six three and a half, four forty eight. So I'm just. Most people think whenever, whenever they think of a, a, a 400 plus pound guy, uh, a lot of times they're thinking of sloppy, just yeah. Yeah, yeah. short, sloppy. But I, it's crazy because I've had many people come up to me in, in, in person and say, look, I just want to tell you I'm sorry because I just thought, you, you know, I made a couple comments and I thought you was just short and fat, you know. Um, but that's – I don't have your typical build, just put it that way. No, you're a, you're a, you're a big I, – uh, I, when I talk about you, I uh, describe you as a building. That's usually how I describe it. <laughs> no, you're a, you're a big dude. Um, so um, – you tried 800 at a meet not too long ago. You almost, you almost got it. Uh, but uh, what tell, tell us what happened. So, I mean, 
at this point in time in my career and, and just what I'm trying to do for powerlifting, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to take it to the next level, uh, to a place where, you know, most people hasn't seen, haven't seen where the potential of the sport of powerlifting. So, uh, and, and what I mean by that is on the big stage, mm -hmm. what does the big stage look like, you know? And it's been a process, but with that being said, uh, when you're talking about the big stage, we're talking about full production. We're talking about, um, we're talking about television. We're talking about the whole nine yards. And I'm just a firm believer that, you know, the talents of people in powerlifting needs to be displayed. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, um, you know, I got asked by the Chicago Cubs to do this event at Wrigley Field. And, um, you know, what better place, you know, to, to, to do it. And it was actually, a, a it was actually on Gallagher way. It's like uh, a place right outside the field, inside the gate it's where they host concerts. And it was just, you know, it was surreal really, but that's what I wanted. I wanted to amp this up. I wanted it to be a big deal. And, um, you know, coming into it, everything was great, but there's a lot of amount of pressure that is added to any, you know, anytime you're doing some type of event like that. And I don't believe that the, it was the pressure more than um, just the technicalities, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I've, I've played it through my head over and over again. What could I possibly done differently? What is it and why am I, you know, getting to the point to where I'm getting ready to hit one of the greatest lifts in the history of the world and I keep falling short? Because I've been on this journey for a little over a year now of the road to 800 mm -hmm. and um man you know i think there's so many things that that it just goes deeper than that uh leading up to the event which i should have known better but leading up to the event heck i was in uh eight cities in the you know the previous month month and a half so uh you know a lot of traveling uh and i just think that that worked against me you know just as far as um the frequency of training frequency and training is huge sure and when you're traveling and you're trying to hold it together though i was getting the 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 bench sessions in i think the accessory work and just the frequency of training i neglected which carried over to me day you know i just I, I didn't capitalize you know so um there's so many technical things that, that i could say that went into this that that uh played a role in it but uh, again we're just taking it you know part by part to focus on building a better you know what, whatever it is whether it's um uh upper shoulder or shoulder development or uh building my triceps we're breaking it down to the most trivial parts and we're going to work on it from there now this is this was the second time you tried 800 and a meet third, third attempt and yeah. me, yes, second time. Okay, and the first time you didn't do it, but that really wasn't your fault. Why don't you explain what happened there? Yeah, so the first time that I attempted 800 pounds was in South Bend, Indiana, 2020, right in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, we still uh, put on this meet, hosted by basically uh, by East Race Muscle, but it was uh, another ESPN event. And uh, the first time powerlifting has ever been shown on the mainstream uh, on the on the main page streaming page of ESPN and um man they misloaded the weight yeah and I came out and just didn't you know I didn't get it I didn't you know and it it, yeah, it was almost the same situation as far as just the lockout didn't I didn't lock out you know um gave it a good push even though the 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 previous attempt of them um misloading 800 pounds um it, it, yeah, it threw me off a bit, but I felt like I was recharged and I was able to come back and it just, it just didn't happen. Um, and again, that's the reason why no one has ever, has ever done this. There's no blueprint to get to this point. So we're basically in uncharted waters trying to figure out what's going to work and, and, and what's not. And you have to include, there's so many different things. Again, like I was talking about, about the meet in Chicago, uh, the, the stresses uh, outside of the gym, I mean, stresses inside the gym, all those play a role in uh, you becoming the best version of you. And if you're not owning up to it and, you know, 
figuring out a way to, to minimize the stress and distractions, um, I think that we still leave some on the table. Mm-hmm. And I have to get to that point to where I don't leave anything on the table. Uh, two questions. Uh, how much did they misload the ball by? <sighs> some say it was a plate over and some say it was a plate under. It was never – it was never um, – we never figured it because it was such a, a quick, I'm not going to say quick correction, but once they figured out what it was, it was like, all right, I got let's, it, I got let's it. move past this and, and, and go on. I think to kind of take some of the heat off of it, you know, because it, it was, there were some people in there that was really upset. Yeah, it was major fuck. I got upset yeah. like, uh, you know, like a riot's about to break out in there, you know? Yeah. And there were some words exchanged, but, you know, uh, I just looked at it like we're all humans. We all make mistakes. It happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, and let's move on and, and, and move forward. And you said a lot of stress. Do you do anything to relieve that, that stress? Um, no, not really. CBD products, uh, yeah. you know, working out helps. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, just working out, you know, mm-hmm. that's about it. You don't have any hobbies outside of powerlifting that lets you, you know, maybe cars, motorcycles, shooting, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I like to shoot guns. Yeah. But again, you know, when you got four kids and oh, okay. a wife, you just there's so many other things that that like half the time when I'm home, um, it it's basically you know fixing things and. But one thing we do, uh, my wife does breed. Uh, she breeds exclusive uh, 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 puppies, so we oh, breed really? the American. Yeah, we breed American bullies. That's great. Man. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of I help out with that. Yeah, uh, but I, I have part, two of them actually. I got two pit bulls. They're sleeping on my bed right now. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we breed, we we breed exclusive bloodlines uh, for specifically American bullies. That's fantastic. So you seen the little short, big, bulky head yeah. dogs that just look crazy? Pocket Those are, pits. That's what we. Uh, yeah, that's what we breed. Um, yeah, I have a good friend. So that's that does kind that. of. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of you know on on the on the but but you know I like to do stuff in my community. Um, I like to hang out, you know, with, with, uh, you know, I'm heavily, in, I was heavily involved with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, the recovery community, but, uh, you know, through COVID and business picking up, you know, I haven't been as involved as, as, uh, I would like to be, but, um, yeah, that's, that's basically what it is for me, man. It's, it's not a lot of time to do, uh, uh, many other things considering, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm building a business and. I'm competing and I have a family and all these things. Sure. Sure. All the priorities. So what is the next, uh, what's the next meet where you're going to be trying to go for 800 again? Do you have it set up? I don't know. I'm just, I'm at a point to where we're, we're, we're sticking to the original game plan. Show up, I mean, get, train until you're ready Show mm-hmm. up to a meet and destroy it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm at a point unless, you know, someone brings a significant amount of money, um, you know, CT Fletcher Iron Wars is coming up. Mm. We're working out some details on that. Um, but as far as the 800 pound bench press, I'm, I'm, it's going to be on my terms. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not allowing other people to dictate when and, and where I'm going to lift. Right. Unless there's going to be a, a six digit or six, six figure payout. Um, yeah. yeah I don't blame we me. put our bodies through all this and, and, um, you know, and everybody else, the majority of other people make money off of it. Sure. And, and powerlifters are left to, you know, wait for the money to trickle down. Mm-hmm. And we get we get the, you know, we get the service money. We get the pennies. And that's not how it should be. You know, no, I, I feel not. if we bring, um, that we're bringing this type of uh, energy. So um, I've interviewed several um, elite lifters. And unequivocally, they all basically, I've asked them this question and they all unequivocally say, it's just a matter of when, not that if you're going to do it, it's a matter of when. And I mean, we're talking Leroy Walker, Bob Merck, Scott Mendelson, Shauna Mendelson, Rita West. They're all basically like, anytime I ask them about a question about you, they go, yeah, he's got to do it. It's just a matter of time. That's all it is. It's, it's just, you know, when you are training to do something like this, is there anybody you use as a training partner or do you have a team? I mean, yeah, team Jailhouse Strong. So 
most of the time I'm lifting with, uh, anytime it's heavy, uh, I usually go with Thomas Davis. Um, uh, I've trained with Matt Winning, but for the most part, it's, it's me. It's me by myself on the daily grind. Uh, I don't, the where I live, we don't have a big powerlifting community and the way my schedule is, you know, um, it's subject to change as far as my lifting times. So it's kind of hard to coordinate um, a and have someone to, to train with. Mm. So I've learned also that if you don't match my energy, then we can't we can't work out together. That's yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. It's you know what I mean? Be, it's, so like, it, it, it's not that it's it's not that it's. I have to go out on a limb here and say not that it's difficult to find somebody that matches your energy. There probably isn't anybody. Uh, because, because even the elite lifters don't do what you do. You're in a category of yourself. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Um, and so you would think that most people, uh, well, not think, but I, I've experienced this, is that most people, one, are scared. I don't know if it's ego or whatever it is to train with someone stronger than them. You know what I mean? Like, it's very mm -hmm. hard. And it's not just stronger, but, you know, compared to the vast majority of people, um, I'm crazy. I mean, there's a huge difference as far as strength level, levels of strength. Mm -hmm. And you would think that people would gravitate to that and try to, um, you know, put their stuff in a better position to, you know, whether competing level or just for just to grow in, on a personal level. Mm -hmm. But people are scared, man. They're, yeah. They shy away from it. It, it, it. And at the end of the day, it's not going to do nothing but challenge you. And that's, across all facets of life, whether finances, uh, business finances, all the above is if, if, if you want to get somewhere in your life, um, then surround yourself with people who are already doing it. Find, surround yourself with people who are already achieving the goals that, that you have, um, that you have set for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's just hard to find people that, uh, and it's not like that I've even searched. I just know, Again, I know the industry and I know people's work ethic. And again, if we're not in there grinding and you think this is going to be a, just a talking session and taking pictures and videos, it's just, it's not going to, I just, I don't have time for it. You know what I mean? No, I don't blame so, you. I've seen that plenty of times in the gym with the, the videos and the Instagram. And I don't know how you concentrate like that, but yeah, that's the world we live in. Um, when you first did uh, the Iron Wars, where I noticed you, and I think the majority of people uh, noticed you. Your bench was six and change at that meet that you won. Is that accurate? Mm, I think so. Yeah. So, so and yeah. and that was what 2018. Was it uh, 2019? I believe 2019. So in two so, meters, you put on over a hundred pounds on your bench. Yeah. So maybe that was 2018. So Iron Wars 2018, I don't, I can't recall the dates. That's okay. No, 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 no. It was 2019. Okay. I had already broke, remember in 2018, I broke, uh, that was my first 700 pound bench press. That oh, I, you that did? I, okay, okay. So um, 2019 was the first time we showed up to Iron Wars and I won with like 785, 685 or something like yes, that. Yes, that's what it was. Okay, okay. So you And then uh, the next year I did 775 for a double. So I didn't really, I was still on the injured list, uh -huh. uh, but I still came and competed anyway just because I wanted to, um, which I probably shouldn't have. But uh, that was 20, that was right before COVID started. Okay. What is like, what is the, the one key ingredient? Obviously, you know, anybody who knows anything about lifting, is everything has to come together. Your diet, your training, your intensity, your mental capacity, so on and so forth. But what's, what do you think is that has been that one thing that has made you been able to put so much weight on the bar and break so many world records? Man, listen, I don't mean to get basic and trivial, uh, not trivial, but spiritual, but like, man, I'm, I'm a huge man in my faith. And I, I believe that if, if God didn't change my life and give me the strength, um, that, that I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I would be somewhere, um, probably doing something I shouldn't be doing. So, um, on, on a spiritual level, yeah, it's, it's because of Jesus Christ, but mm -hmm. on the physical level, in the physical realm, I just think that that drive, that mental drive that I have is, is unmatched, man. And, and, and 
lately I've been trying to get back to that. It's hard because it comes and it goes. That that, but for the most part, it's just the the will the one. I desire to succeed so bad that it just carries over and, and I live it out, you know? So the, 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 the desire to see it through, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and I guess that would be still on the lines of, of mental, but physical, just a day in and day out of grinding, mm-hmm. you know, uh, people don't understand how, how vital programming is and programming, not just over a year, not over two years, I'm talking long-term programming over three or four, five years. Mm. I mean, if you just look at it, just look at the, how a body matures. A lot of times it takes, okay, for, from my understanding, it takes a bodybuilder anywhere from four to eight years for their body to mature and get in competition, um, get in a competition, I'd say somewhat of a, uh, a, a competition physique, four to eight years. So I just think that that, that just, that's enough time for your body to start maturing and your muscles to, to, to adapt to the loads and your body to get used to these things. And, and, that, and that's just bodybuilding. But I believe that, that bodybuilding and powerlifting are somewhat of the same thing because it's what we're doing anyway is, is bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. And I think um, just doing the programming and not changing coaches, not switching over, um, to different uh, uh, protocols or, 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 or whatever the case is, but sticking to the same, you now given there's so many different things, factors you can factor in, there's the, you have to make sure that all pieces of the puzzle are put together, meaning you have a solid coach that understands the game, that understands programming. And, this, and again, this is from my perspective, but um, most people that, that, that I've trained in the past, you know, they're four to six months and they're done. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no, there's no longevity in them doing, seeing it through and allowing their body to continue to build, you know? So I don't know if I'm rambling on or if, if, if I'm no, somewhat it, making it, it, sense, it, 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 but it makes sense. Absolutely. But that's just, for me, it, it's been huge being coached under Jock Bryant. And because I didn't start seeing some of my biggest breakthroughs until year three and four. Year three and four is when, you know, I just, there's something happened where I just felt like my body was in sync and um, everything was, was in tune together. You know, like I've worked out all my uh, um, imbalances and um, I'm really starting to find my strong points and starting to find my groove. And that takes years. And most people aren't willing to take, not only put in the work, but just to take that long of time to dedicate to one, one cause. Yeah, no, I agree fully. Absolutely. I mean, what do you think about that? No, 100%. Even what I'm doing, even the podcasting, most people last a month, they think they put a couple of videos up and it's just going to explode and it doesn't, you know, because you hear, you hear so many stories like, the, uh, in your world, it's like Larry Wheels, right? He's that one story where he just went from rags to riches overnight, right? And in my world, it's a guy like Rogan where it's just like, boom, but the majority of people, 98% of people need the time and work and effort to put into it before you actually see any results. And um, I fully agree. I mean, when you tell me it takes three to four years before you actually broke through to the point where you wanted to be, I agree completely. I've been doing this for about a year and a half and I'm not, not even close. It's growing, but not even close. I see progress, but nothing what I want yet. And it takes that time and effort. And it, you, in my opinion, you need, the, you need the passion, which you have, you need the mental capacity, which you have, and quite frankly, you need the genetics, which you obviously have. Um, and if you have the drive and you have the right people in your corner, then I don't think anything can stop you. Your records are going to be broken, but they're going to be broken years and years and years from now. They're like going to be like the C.T. Fletcher. Like his strict curl was like 30 years before, yeah. somebody, before Leroy Walker broke it. And that's going to be you. You're going to hit that 800 and it's going to be – 10, 15 years from now before some other freak of nature, you know, and then you're going to be on the sidelines hugging them, congratulating them, just like the guys do to you. It's, it's, it's inevitable. But I think with your records, you're in, in such another stratosphere that it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take yeah. a lot of time before it's broken, just like the C.T. Fletcher American strip code. Absolutely. And I, I mean, and it's, so people have to understand that what, my mission or coming into this 
I already knew who I was and what my identity was in. Mm -hmm. So that's what people understand is, is uh, powerlifting doesn't define me as a person. Um, and as long as I understand that and know that I can find that balance and how much drive and dedication and where all that comes from, because something else has to fuel that. Mm -hmm. Something else has to fuel uh, you getting up and doing the grind of, uh, of, 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 of podcasting and work and whatever the case is, something else has to fuel that. Meaning if there's, if there's nothing deeper down to fuel that, then eventually you're going to fizzle out just like 90% of the rest of, of people. Right. So um, understanding your identity is very key when it comes to starting and building a dream is understanding who you are. And I'm not saying you're, I'm not saying that your vision has to be, uh, uh, perfectly clear, but somewhat knowing what you want and where you want to go. And I think for me was uh, ultimately proving to my family and my kids um, that whatever you go through in life, that you can always turn it into something beautiful. And mm -hmm. basically that's what we're doing is it's bigger than just the bench press. The platform is bigger than just a powerlifting platform. We're inspiring millions across the world. And that's what the main mission of, of why I do what I do is just to inspire people across the world, you know, and, and to inspire myself, you know, I always talk about how I'm my biggest cheerleader because, you know, a lot of times no, no one else is with me when I'm in the gym late nights, uh, grinding it out and, and body sore, mentally fatigued, stressed out, uh, body hurting and all these things but I have to keep in mind there's something else fueling that because if there, if there wasn't something bigger than the cause of powerlifting, then I would have probably fizzled out a long time ago. And I never would have broke some of the records that I broke today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So there's an element, like I said, you have to be fixed on, on your, your why, why you're doing what you're doing. But the, I would say some of the, the biggest aspect to contribute to where I'm at today is because um, man, just sticking to the program. I don't know how many other power lifters out there probably could have done somewhat similar to what I've done if they would have stuck to the program right. and been consistent and, and taking it serious and, and training and cutting out partying and all these other things, you know, but those are the things that I was willing to do, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what brought me to where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. besides um you said uh inspiring people uh growing up or through your bench through your powerlifting journey did anybody inspire you did you have any um and my mom okay my mom i mean she was the one that that you know did both the duties uh, of the house you know my dad you know was going through whatever he was going through and uh you know so seeing my mom go through the grind every day to provide for me and my brother that, I mean, that was, that was my hero. Mm -hmm. That was who inspired me. But, um, you know, again, when you're not, there's a, when it comes to a person and the development and, and how we perceive life, um, I believe that there should be a fatherly blueprint that a man leads his kids and leads his family and shows them, what to do. Um, I'm not saying a woman can't do that, but it's a lot harder. Absolutely. Psychologically, couldn't, it's couldn't a lot agree harder. More. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's uh, psychologically, it it's a lot harder for a kid to understand that. That's right. So when the, when the, when the direction of the father is not in the household, I mean, the kids are susceptible to and so many different she, things. Absolutely. 100%. Man, so, uh, and I think the, 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 the statistics are, are, are high also when it comes to, um, obviously recidivism rate and, um, and just ex the chances of their kids experiencing the same lifestyle, whether being raped, uh, becoming a drug addict mm -hmm. or the whole nine yards, um, you know, they're more, uh, uh prone to ex those experiences. And, um, you know, like I said, my mom did the best she could, but I chose to do the wrong things. And, and unfortunately, uh, you know, I had to suffer for, for, for some of the stuff that I've, that I've done, but, uh, at the end of the day, I think it's all worth it. Every yeah, bit of I it. mean, you obviously corrected yourself and you're on the right path. Um, 
So let's, let's, uh, I have two more questions, man. And then I'll, and then I'll let you go. The, the most obvious question I have is <clears throat> why not equipped? How come you never got yourself into equipped lifting? Man, I don't know. I don't, I have a lot of equipped friends. I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's a question that always arises. Um, okay. Is don't get me wrong. I think it's impressive when it comes to holding a thousand pounds, a thousand pounds over, over your, over your, over your face. Mm. But my issue is, is you have a lot of equipped lifters that, um, and I just didn't want to be one of those guys, but you have a lot of equipped lifters that you ask them how much they bench, they're going to tell you a thousand pounds. Yeah, that's right. 900 pounds. They're not going to tell you that they use a, basically a, a, a spring loaded jacket mm -hmm. to lift the weight. So I feel it just takes away from, it takes away from the actual sport of, of raw power, raw lifting. But Again, you know, I, I still think it's impressive, but for me, I just never wanted to be one of those guys. You know, mm -hmm. if you can't do it raw, don't do it at all. Is what Matt Winning said. Uh, okay, I totally he, understand. He, he lifted equipped also, you know, and he and he's just going off of what one of his mentors told him: if you can't lift it raw, then don't do it at all. You know, yeah. and I'm now given there's, you know, I'm not saying uh, don't do equipped lift, but for me, it's just not for me. Right. I just never wanted to be one of those type of guys. And I think early on in the sport, I just got burnt out on it because they they would put – I was benching such a heavy weight early on that they would put me against or in the same group as the equipped lifters. Ah, I see. So okay. it just kind of like, you know, it kind of – I don't know. I don't know what it did to me psychologically, but it just kind of formed this bitterness towards – the sport of geared geared lifting you know yeah, yeah. and well, that uh, certainly makes sense you know and it just i just i didn't you know i didn't care too much for it you know yeah, I, I remember a competition where they had us in the same class literally i won still wow the guy had a bench i think like 640 or something like that and i benched 672 but they had us in the same basically the same category wow i didn't know so that. if he would have beat me he would have won you know what i mean like and, and and uh probably some spinoff federation but still um i didn't know no better and right uh like i said that's that's kind of my my two cents on equipped uh lifting all right last question and then i'll let you go daniel zamani there's been a lot of talk about this iranian oh lifting. yeah uh, oh yeah. yeah what do you think man that's another one of those things man like Part of me thinks it's uh, part of me thinks he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. Then another part of me is like, you know, how long has he been competing? I don't think he's uh, been in a competition as of yet. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Oh yeah. So I, I, did, I didn't know if you've done your research. So I would say he's been competing equipped lifting. Oh, not okay. Okay. For like five years, six years maybe. Okay. But he just did single ply. Okay. So just well, one ply jacket, which is not too much. And he's never even, I, I want to say, he's benched more raw than he did equipped. Okay. All right. So there's a lot of talk down the line and people saying that the weights are fake and all this stuff. And, I've heard that and, too. Yeah. Um, that he's just using this as clout for other reasons, for social media reasons. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, I talk to them and I give everybody the benefit of the doubt, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't, again, I'm one of those type of guys where I'm staying in my own lane. Mm -hmm. And like I told him, he, 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 you know, we had this conversation. He's like, everyone, will you tell the world that, that, that uh, what I'm doing is real and you support it? And I'm like, look, bro, until you step on the stage, until you get on the platform and do it at a sanctioned meet, with with um, calibrated plates, uh, then then there's nothing I could say or do to help support that. So he has like, never he came he out has, of nowhere. He has um, never he has never done a meat raw. He's never done a meat raw. Yeah, so I, I and he's done, he's he's he's, a, he, he's done multiple equipped meats. So what people are saying to me, and this is this isn't on my own assumptions or or whatever. What people come to me with is. He's done X amount of events 
quit lifting. It wouldn't be nothing for him to call up WRPF or any one of these federations, and they would be glad to make it happen. Absolutely, yeah. You know what I mean? So why? What are you waiting for? Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and again, these are questions that people ask me, but I'm just like, at the end of the day, I don't care. I got bills coming at the end of the month. Get your own problem. I got four kids. I got a wife. I got, uh, I got yards to be mowed. I got honey, do, honey do list to get done. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I know. The deal. You know what I mean? They're like, do you not care that your title is, is at stake? That it, your but title's it's not. Threat? And I'm like, coming from where? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like until somebody steps on the platform and does it, then it's a different. It's a it, then it'd be a different ball game. But at this point, I cannot be worried. That's like I'm in California, and a and a, I'm just saying maybe a poor analogy. I'm in California, and there's a hurricane coming through the Gulf, and it's just like, why? Why am I even worried about it? Right? You know, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. far away. Like, yeah, I'm not worried about it. You know, yeah. so. So all those rumors um, about you and him having some kind of liftoff as a meet, or it's just rumors. We was gonna do it at, at Iron Wars. Um, oh, okay. But again, you know, like like I've talked to and I've been open. If I'm not getting paid, then I'm lifting on my terms. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it's not. A, I've already done the lifts, and I've already been lifting for the sport of powerlifting over the past six years. I've already gave all the freebies away. Mm -hmm. Now, because at the end of the day, the weights that I'm lifting now, uh, I'm one severe injury away from ending my career. That's right. That's right. So yeah. if, if I don't get paid for what I do, whether I show up and, and, and hit a lift or not, if I don't get paid for it, I'm not doing it. Right. I'm just flat right. out just being honest. Like, Well, you put your time in up. and you got, I, I, I understand you got mouths to feed. You put your time in. It's, it's deservedly so. I agree. So when somebody comes along and, and I've had people call me and say, look, I'll, I'll give you 500 bucks on a plane ticket and I'll, I'll buy you a meal. I'm laughing inside. So I mean, I'm respectfully, but I'm inside like laughing. Like you have no idea the time and, and effort that I've put into this and how much of an insult it is for somebody to offer me a plane ticket and 500 bucks to come and, 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 and do this. Like, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's people pay me longer than that for my time. I get, you know, and I'm not throwing it out there, but I'm just grateful to be in the sport of powerlifting and to be able to monetize and do what I do um, and make a living off of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but at the end of the day, like I said, I want this to be known is I've put in my time. I've, I've gave away, uh, not saying gave away, but I've competed to let the world see Many different meets, many different meets where I didn't even get paid. I didn't even get my plane ticket comped, mm -hmm. you know. And now I'm just to a point to where, you know, um, you know, we're getting we're getting national television recognition, and that's that shows something. So you're gonna pay me for me to compete, like it's just flat out. Yeah, I I, I, I I couldn't agree more, dude. I I couldn't agree more. I uh, I uh, advertise. Uh, products for free just to get people on my show. And I'm hoping that in two to three years that flips where, no, sorry, now you got to pay me. I put my time in, right? Oh, bro, it's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. And I totally understand where you're coming from. You got mouths to feed, so on and so forth. I, I get it. Like, I have a, I ha, I, I'm a sewer worker in New York City. So I work some, sometimes till three, sometimes till seven. Then I go to the gym, then I, and I'm married, and we have a house. And then I come home, I do interviews, got to do the editing, so on and so forth. So I, sometimes I don't go to bed till midnight. And I'm hoping, just like you said, that you, you, it's going to pay off in the long run, right? Yeah, you're right now, you're, you're, you're right now, you're stacking up sweat equity. Right. All exactly. the blood, sweat, and tears is right. equity in the investment. And, and, and again, all this is, right, right now, what you're doing is this is an investment for your future. Mm -hmm. And, um, you just have to st continue, even in times when you're like, man, is this even worth it? Mm -hmm. How many times do you, you think that I've laid in bed and thought about, like, where I'm sore to the point to where I can barely move my arms, I feel like I have the flu, um, life is still going on. How, how many times I've laid in, in the bed and said, is this all worth it? Right, sure, sure. Is it worth doing what I'm doing? I can't imagine coming home from doing what you what you've been doing then doing the interviews and then editing and then 
going to going to bed for a few hours and getting right back up and doing it again all over right. again. Right. It, that is oh, a grind, yeah. and you'll respect it even more. So yeah, once right, you look right. back, you're going to use that as fuel. They're, they're, remember, we talked about something bigger than 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 what it is at the task at hand, and that's what it is. You put you sacrifice so much to get to this point. So you know, in the times when you're discouraged, you're going to look back and think, "Man, no, nah, I'm built for this. I sacrificed way too much to get to this point." Mm-hmm. And that's what we—that's what we have to do in life. So if you're not work, if a person isn't forming a source of sweat equity, or they're not giving all that they can, because here, here's the, here's the, and I, t- I say this across the board all the time. I don't want to look back 15 years from now and be one of those guys and say, "Man, I wish I would have did A, B, C, and D." Mm-hmm. Now look at my situation. I don't want to be in some assembly line or, or doing something that I hate because I didn't capitalize on the moment right now. And some people aren't capitalizing on the moment right now. And when they get in their 40s, 50s, 60s, they're going to be the people wishing and looking back and living with regret. And I don't want to be one of those type of dudes living with regret. I want to lay it all on the line right now, today, right now, at this moment, uh, whatever we're doing, we're going to give it our best because if we're not giving it our best, why are we even here? That's right. Why are we doing it? Yeah. You know, just to, you know, just to be mediocre and put all this time and effort in to be mediocre. No, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. We're putting this time in because there's a greater cause. There's a bigger reason. So um, I think it's vital that the audience understands that there's always a next level to go to and complacency and convenience kills and you have you you have to stay away from those things, you know. And there, there's a quote that all that that what is it? Um, uh, party now, work later, or, or or work hard now, and 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 party later, you know. So that's that's the thing. Is I'm gonna build this up to where one day I can just sit back and 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 monetize and relax off the off the. The, the fruits that, that and the, the seeds that I planted in, in, in the beginning, you know, off my harvest. So um, I don't know. I'm just telling that that's how I feel. That's what I get fired up about. That's why I want to inspire people is because I've been one of those dudes that that um, was complacent. I've been one of those dudes that was just laxed and didn't uh, push myself or desire to push myself. Um, I was comfortable with, uh, you know, my situation and, and for some, that's okay. That might be the best you can do is just be comfortable in your situation. Mm-hmm. But that's not for me. I don't want that. I don't want that. And that's the reason why you're the best at what you do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, Ju- Julius, it has been a pleasure having you on, man. It's a pleasure and honor. And I'm really glad that we had this time to talk and interview you. And um, much love, much respect. I'm always following you on social media. I'm always following you on the meets and so on and so forth. And um, I re- really appreciate you coming on, man. And uh, tell the people, remember, you got to like and subscribe to Serious and Silliness on YouTube. Yeah. Hey, guys, don't forget, like and subscribe, Serious and Silliness on YouTube. Go follow the, uh, the so- all social media platforms. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And um, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>